Hey, it's good to see you. And I'm trying to get used to looking at a dot there. I want it to be over here. I feel like I need to be looking over here. But if I look over here, it looks like I'm talking to somebody else. <laughs> oh, damn. So I've stared a dot. I don't know how I feel about that. If I look over here, I can't tell where I'm looking at. It's like, <laughs> oh, shit. I'm going to tell you a story. You're going to hate me. But I believe in being transparent, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. I went on a date with this guy. When was this? Shit, this was some... This was before I met Glenda the Good Witch. So it had to be before... We had our first date November 29th, 2011. I remember that. Because it was... Um, like we met online on Match, I believe. And uh, I wasn't expecting much. I wasn't even nervous before my date with him. I don't know why. I was just kind of like, you know, I kind of felt like, what's the point? Because I had gone on a few dates with some guys that I met online, and none of them panned out. And, you know, I just, I, I like, I wasn't nervous. I didn't care. Like, whatever. I, I, whatever. I don't give a shit. So, but we really hit it off. He was awesome. He's very handsome, and we have a lot in common that I didn't even know before we actually met and sat down and talked. We have a, we have a lot of stuff in common. It was really great. And uh, actually, I was talking to him earlier today, trying to get some ideas for my next cooking video, because I said, you usually end up with most of the stuff I cook. What would you like? Is there anything you would like to have in particular? And he said he would like to have either a tomato or a squash casserole of some sort. I said, you got it. So the next thing we cooked, I'm kind of looking at this. I found this recipe for an old-fashioned southern tomato pie, which I've never heard of in my life. I've never had tomato pie, like, ever. So I'm kind of curious about it. So we're probably going to make tomato pie for him. Um, what? I've distracted myself three times. So, no, looking at this and not knowing where to look. This is my new phone, by the way. And not knowing quite where to look, there's a... There's a tiny green dot. Ooh. Right there? I don't think I'm looking at the right place. I can't tell. I don't know what the hell. I feel like I need to be looking over here because with my old phone, it was over here. And you say, well, turn it, you know, flip it the other way. Mm -mm. When you flip it, it's the same. You look in that same corner. No matter which way the, the phone is turned, doesn't matter. <sighs> anyway. I had a date with this guy. We met on Match.com. This was, Lord, this is probably back in 20, 2011. I don't think I really started dating until about 2011. My, uh, the Wicked Witch of the West and I broke up um, in October of 2008 was when that all came crashing down and our marriage met a timely end. But that's more detail than I care to go into. You know, some personal shit I, I don't care to get into at this point. Um, anyway, there was this, there was this uh, man on, on Match, and, and he seemed, you know, just reading through his thing, like, oh, we got some stuff in common. You know, you know we live kind of near each other. Why not? So I, I talked to him a little bit online, and then we agreed to meet for lunch one day. And I learned that I'm, I'm more shallow than I thought. I learned something about myself on this date. I did. First of all, the picture he put on there was at least 10 years old. He, no, I met him in person. He was way older in reality than he was in that picture. That picture had to be at least 10, 15 years old. <clears throat> it was like a Polaroid or something. And also, you could not tell in this picture, but he had a... <laughs> it's, it's not funny. It is not funny. It just... It caught me off guard, okay? He had a bitchin' lazy eye. And I'm, I'm not making fun. I'm not making fun of that at all because I understand that's something you can't help. Sometimes you can get corrective something done about it, but, I mean, it was bad. It was really bad. Like, it, like he's looking at you and the other eye's like over here. And I couldn't, it was really bad because depending on the way his head was turned, I would forget which eye was actually looking at me. And I didn't say anything about it and he didn't say anything about it. And we're, we we ate at this um, this Mexican restaurant. It actually doesn't exist anymore. It's closed since then. I can't remember the name of it. It was good food. That was really good. I don't think I had ever eaten there before, but we agreed to meet there because where he worked and where I worked, it was like kind of between where we worked, so we could meet there at lunchtime. 
So first of all, he was clearly older than he said he was. Um, I was like, how old was I? 37, 38, something. And he said he was 38. Uh-uh. This guy was 50 if he was a day. Had to be. I'm sorry. I'm like, you, there is no damn way you're 38. Ain't no damn way. I didn't say that, but I'm thinking, you, you are not at all 38. Not anymore. You haven't been 38 in a long damn time. You're like 38 plus tax. You are 50 at least. I'm not saying it. But the whole time, like every now and then, he turned his head and it would look like this eye was looking at me, but I wasn't sure. Like when he turned to check, there was a car alarm going off in the parking lot and he turned to look to see if it was his car and it looked like he was looking dead at me and it freaked me the hell out. Like he's not actually looking at me. Where is he? I don't know. And I couldn't say anything about it. And through this whole lunch... I'm thinking, Mary, are you really so shallow? Are you really that shallow that this would bother you? That you would not go out with this man again because of that? Are you really that damn shallow? I am disappointed in you. Like, I'm having this conversation in my head. Like, are you really? Are you really that terrible that you would not go out with him again? And I'm sitting here like, I don't know that I could ever get used to that. I And I, I'm sitting here like, yes, I am shallow. I am a horrible person. But I am being brutally honest with myself. I'm going, first of all, I feel like I got catfished. Not really. But I mean, it, it was technically a picture of him. But he had his head turned so that both eyes were going to like the same. Like he had his head like this. So you, it was, it was deliberate. It was deliberate as hell. Because his head's like this. And both eyes are pointed this way. But when he turns his head this way, this one goes pew. And I'm not laughing. God, I'm a terrible person. <sighs> anyway, some but some other stuff did up did come up during the the lunch. It was like, oh. we had some differences of opinions on some things that are kind of important to me, and it's like, oh, hmm. And we both did sort of like, yeah, okay, <laughs> yikes. So I, I mean. I probably, I mean, if I, I probably wouldn't have gone out with him anyway, but the eye thing really bothered me. And, uh, I mean, it was severe and, and I feel terrible, but I'm being honest. I'm being totally honest. And I think you have to be honest. You know, some things can put you off to the point that you, you just don't find the person attractive anymore. It's, I'm sorry. It's just, you know, but this, just reminded me of that and I, I feel bad we, we we just there was like that was the end of it like nobody contacted anybody after that point it's like oh it's nice to meet you have a nice life it's kind of like that so we were both just kind of like yeah maybe not no hard feelings but no thank you so that's okay that's okay that's I mean hey you never know because you know I went out with Glenda the bleh into the good witch and, and it was just great it was oh we hit it off right away it was awesome it was so great he's up in the mountains playing with his new tractor this week <laughs> he bought a tractor the damn thing was like fifty thousand dollars and he's having a ball with it up there at his parents place they have his parents have a place up in the mountains his dad actually passed away was it last year or year before he died suddenly and so Linda the good witch has been taking care of their place up there and clearing out a lot of the land around there and, you know, keeping it, keeping it nice. So, cause his dad's not around to do it anymore. So he's kind of stepped in to do that, which I think is really cool. So he's up there. He keeps sending me pictures of stuff he's doing with the tractor. Look what I can do. He's, he's like a little kid with a toy. I love it. It's awesome. So, uh, I wanted to talk about my three marriages because every time I mention it in a video on my other channel, I get the same comment from at least a couple of people. It's always the same when I mention that I have three divorces. I have three failed marriages, like Ross, I guess, on Friends or whatever. Three failed marriages. Yeah, that's right. And I always get the same comment from at least a couple of people. Which I think is meant to be a compliment, but it's kind of not. But I, I take it as a compliment. But, you know, the assumption is kind of not a compliment. They go, I can't believe you've been married three times. Did those guys just not see how awesome you are? Like, you're assuming they left me. You're assuming they divorced me. Baby, they didn't divorce me. 
None of them divorced me. I initiated all three divorces. And the reason I, I am so open and honest about that is if there's anybody out there in the world who has a grudge against me and wants to sling some mud my way, I just put everything out there. Like, I'll tell you, yeah, I've been married and divorced three times. Yes, I had an eating disorder. Yes, I have dealt with depression and anxiety. Yes, I have taken antidepressives. I have taken Xanax. I'm going to tell you all this stuff. So if anybody wants to sling mud, they're going to have to just make some shit up. Yes, I was in a cult. I'll tell you whatever, you know, I, I'm very open and honest about it. Um, I don't know, I guess some people, and I usually get somebody, somebody will scold me, you know, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed. Well, I tell you what, my parents were married for 33 years and hated it. They both said they really wish they had divorced about 20 years sooner. They were miserable. They, it was, the divorce was so, so bitter and it took forever and it got dragged out and lawyers got involved and it was nasty. It was a nasty divorce. I mean, I would rather, I would rather be divorced and happy than be married and accepted by society, I guess, but miserable. Maybe everybody doesn't feel that way, but. I've learned, yes, I've been in and out of therapy. I will talk about that too. That's nothing to be ashamed of. Yes, I have been in therapy several times in my life. I'm not currently, but if I, if I felt like I needed to go back to therapy, I would go back to therapy in a heartbeat. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame in getting help when you need it. There is nothing wrong with that. I have lost an uncle and a great uncle to suicide. And I know that, well, I, I would think if they were, if they felt they could get some help, maybe it wouldn't have gone that way for them. I mean, we'll never know now, but you know, they were kind of of the opinion that, you know, men don't, men don't do that kind of thing. It means you're weak. If you're, you know, if you're a man and you go to therapy, you know, you're, you're, you're weak, but it doesn't mean you're weak. It means you're pretty damn strong to be able to say that you need help and to go get help if you need it. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I realized through therapy though, that I grew up in a home where my, my vision I had no concept of a loving, happy marriage. I never saw it growing up. My mom's parents never showed any affection for one another, like ever. I never saw them hug or say, I love you or nothing. I had no idea. And my mom and dad were freaking miserable. I had, I had no idea, I guess, what a healthy marriage looked like. And I grew up believing I had no self-esteem. I had no self-confidence. I, I guess... I felt like I didn't deserve to be treated with respect and dignity. I really didn't. And I realized all this through therapy. And because of that, I was sort of drawn to, I hate to say it, defective men. I, I hate to put it that way, but abusive, defective men. I was drawn to that without realizing it. And my first two husbands were abusive and or defective. They were just, they used me. They took me for granted. They mistreated me and I just put up with it until I couldn't put up with it anymore and then I divorced them and got away from them and uh but the Glenda the Good Witch was kind of different because he I don't know I, I I think I had dealt with a lot of my demons and I had come to realize a lot about my past especially after my second divorce I was in therapy for a bit and that was when I really started to see the pattern, like, what is wrong with me? I remember asking that in therapy, what is wrong with me? And that's when we got into talking about, well, what was your parents' marriage? What was their marriage like? And so we talked about that at length and like, here's what it looked like. I, to me, growing up, being married meant you hate your spouse. You don't want to be around them. You talk shit about them behind their back. You treat them like crap, you know. And if you're the wife, you just shut up and take it. You just shut up and go along with it. Grit your teeth. Just put up with it. Grumble about it when he's not around, but you don't do anything. They split up about a month after I left for college. They were waiting for me to leave. And later my mom said, you know, if you hadn't been there, I could have left him a lot sooner. I could have left him four years sooner if you hadn't been there. Because my brother is four years older and moved out four years before I did. I'm like, sorry. You, you know, you could, don't blame it on me though. 
you, I didn't tell you to stay. I would have preferred that you leave. I would have preferred y'all not be together because life was hell living with you two and having to walk on eggshells every minute of the day when I'm at home. So, but to me, that was a normal marriage. That was what marriage, that was normal. Anything other than that would have felt weird to me. And I do believe I was drawn to just bad people. I was just drawn to bad people. My first marriage, I hardly even knew the guy because we were both, we were in the church and we weren't allowed to date without a chaperone. I wasn't even allowed to know where he lived when we, we were in the cult together. It's in my book, River Road, if you haven't, if you don't know about that. I, I don't feel like going into all that right now. It's not a fun little story time kind of thing. We didn't even really know each other when we got married and there was a lot about him I didn't know. He had a shocking amount of debt in collections that if I had known about it, I wouldn't have married him. He had tons of debt in collections. I He flat out lied about it. Um, there was a lot about him I didn't know, but I found out after we got married and that marriage only lasted about a year. And um, I divorced him. I kicked him out and divorced him. And uh, he was kind enough when he moved out to leave the front door wide open and somebody got into the house and stole a bunch of my shit after he left. Yeah. Either that or he did it. I, I think he just left the front door wide open all day while I was at work and somebody just went in there and helped themselves to a whole bunch of my stuff, including my high school class ring and some of my really nice jewelry that my mom had given me. I never got any of it back. But yeah, I had, again, I had no concept of what I guess what what a good marriage would look like, what a good marriage partner would look like. I married broken people. I really did. I married people who treated me bad, had no respect for me, and wanted me to have no respect for myself, and wanted to run me down and make me think that I wasn't worth anything, so I would never leave. It almost worked. But fortunately, there was enough strength in me to say, no, this is not normal. This is not what I want. I got to get out. So that was my first two marriages. My third marriage, it was really just a blended family that never blended. Glenda the Good Witch and I still get along great. But between the two of us, when we got married, we had five boys all under the age of 12. And all seven of us living in a house just never quite worked. We tried therapy. We tried all kinds of things to make it work and it just long story short it just didn't work it just didn't work so it was a very amicable split you know we hated it and it was kind of a mutual decision kind of thing a little bit more on my side than his I said look this is just not it's not gonna work everybody's miserable we're all miserable you know I just don't think it's gonna work now on down the road you know our kids are getting older um, would we ever get married again? I don't know. I don't know. It's definitely, it's definitely something I would consider. Um, I'm, I'm not averse to it. I, I'm not. I, the thing is though, I think we've both kind of gotten used to living without having to deal with a spouse and we, I think we both kind of like it. So it might be one of these things. And I actually know a couple like this. They divorced and they live in two totally different houses, but they still date. They still go out. They don't date anybody else. They're, they're exclusive. They just can't live in the same house together. They have to have their own space and they each have a house and they just, I guess they're just going to date forever. I have no idea. Hey, it works for them. And sometimes you may end up in an unconventional relationship. It would, hey, if it works for you and the other person, go for it. I mean, shit, if you're not hurting anybody, go for it. You don't have to have a conventional relationship. You don't. That You know, I wouldn't worry about it. I'm not worried about it. I'm in no hurry to get married. I like, I kind of like not being married. And it's not because I want to date other people. It's because, you know, if I want to do something, I just go. I just do it. I don't have to check with anybody. Shit. I just get in the car and go. I like that. And I think Linda the Good Witch likes that as well. I really, there's a mosquito in here. Oh, I had, I had the, sorry, that's nasty. I had the, the back door open for a little bit while he was out there, and I think some I think a couple of mosquitoes got in. That was a mosquito. I, I killed it. It's dead. I sweep it. Um, but I, I think he likes being able to go and do 
Plus he has, you know, he has um, a condo up in the mountains that he goes up and, and does the work on because up there for the last year or so, it's been hard to find a cleaning company to clean it out. You know, he rents it out online and it's hard to find cleaning companies. These cleaning companies are not taking new, new clients because they can't get enough people to work. So they're severely understaffed, so they're not taking new places. And he did hire this one cleaning company, but they were not doing a good job. So a lot of times he just goes up there himself and cleans it because he doesn't want to get a bad review online because the next people come in like, oh, this place was, you know, yucky when the cleaning people just don't do a very good job. So he goes up there and does it himself and he likes going and doing stuff. He just likes doing stuff like that. And, you know, I like doing my thing. And sometimes if I want to make a video at 10 o'clock at night, he probably wouldn't be too fond of that because he's usually in the bed by about nine o'clock or so because he gets up super early every morning. Um, you know, our sleep schedules are nothing alike. I mean, like I, there are a lot of things we would have to work on and I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know that we would want to do that, but I'm not worried about it and he's not worried about it. Like I'm not dating anybody else. I don't think he is. I'm pretty sure he's not only he would find time to. But we're happy with things the way they are. But yeah, am I divorced? Do I have three divorces? Yeah, I sure as hell do. I have three divorces under my belt. It's not, I mean, are you proud of that? Well, I mean, I'm not proud of it or ashamed of it. I mean, it is what it is. I can't exactly change it. I would rather have three divorces than be miserable than to be in a marriage where every day of my life is like hell for whatever reason. I would rather be divorced and have somebody you know scrutinize me or judge me for it I don't give a shit if you're not paying my bills I don't really care how you feel about me anyway you know but it's it's just funny to me how every time every time I say I have three divorces there are always a few people that go I can't believe you know they let those three guys let you get away like they didn't let me get away I kicked their asses out Linda the good witch no I didn't I didn't kick his ass out I moved out of his house. I had to live in an apartment for a year until we got the financial stuff straightened out. and Because we had refinanced his house and it was in both our names. We had to get that sorted out and it was a pain in the ass. And then I bought this place. Boy, I'm glad I bought this house when I did. God, I couldn't imagine trying to buy a house now. I feel for anybody trying to buy a house. That would suck. But am I ashamed of it? No. It, I mean, I'm not. I, I, what is there to be ashamed of? I made bad choices in the past. I think because, based on what I saw growing up, I didn't even know what a good marriage, a healthy marriage looked like. I, I didn't know, and I didn't know that I didn't know. I had no idea that the way I looked at marriage was not healthy. I didn't know that. I had never seen a happily married couple in my entire life. I, growing up, I can't think of a single happily married couple that I encountered, like, ever. Every married couple I knew seemed absolutely miserable. And it, they, it seemed like they hated each other. I just, damn, and I don't know. Growing up, I just never felt like I was worth much. I just, I don't, I just, I didn't really feel like I deserved to be treated with any respect at all. I just had very, a very low opinion of myself and, and I married accordingly the first two times. But, uh, I remember, my God. Okay. So I was pregnant when I ended my second marriage, two months pregnant. And there's a whole lot of shit I'm not going to get into as to what went down not good stuff. But anyway, I was I was outside raking leaves one day, one long after I kicked him out. And uh, one of our neighbors, this lady who lived up the road, um, she liked to take walks up and down our street. And she came walking down the street and she stopped. She said, I haven't seen your husband in a while. Is he doing okay? I said, oh, he doesn't live here anymore. And I just went back to raking. And she goes, Oh, well, I hope he comes back. <laughs> I said, I hope the hell he don't. Well, jam this rake up his ass. <laughs> She's like, oh. And she just quickly just went on the road. <laughs> Thank you for assuming that he left me. <laughs> Shit. 
I don't think I've ever had anybody assume that, that they didn't leave me. I, I can see that. I can see that because I'm sort of a crusty bitch and, hey, you know, she's probably not like in, she, in real life. She's probably not anything like she acts like on here. Well, I mean, aren't we all a little different in different parts of our lives and different times of day? Do you smile all the time? Some people seem to think if you're on YouTube, you should smile all the time, especially if you're, if you're a woman, you should, you should always be happy and, and smile and say good things and happy things. And that's all there is to my life. I'm not a Stepford wife and that's not how I talk. That's not how I am. I never have been. I never will be. I have been salty all my life and I'll probably remain that way. I'm going to be one of these sassy old ladies that just tells you exactly what they think and then gives you the finger for good measure, and you know, cause I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a pretty, pretty princess. I didn't even put on makeup today. I'm wearing a tank top that I had to wrestle a mannequin to get. Look at this. This tank top, what does it say? North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I found that I was in Walmart at uh, the Myrtle Beach Myrtle Beach Walmart? Shit, I don't know. And I was looking at all their shirts and stuff. I think I was making a video. And I saw this one on a mannequin. It was on a mannequin. I said, I gotta have that tank top. It's so damn cold. There was a, the mannequin way up on the shelf. And it had this tank top on it. And I looked all around the store. I couldn't find these. Like, where is this tank top? And I couldn't find an employee to help me, of course. Because if you need an employee in Walmart, they all run away. Ro like roaches, when the lights come on, they all run away. They know when you need help. They can sense it and they just disappear. So, there's nobody around. And I'm getting frustrated. And I'm looking at this cute little tank top. I said, I got I to have that tank top. I got to have it. I keep forgetting to look over here. I keep trying to look over here. And you're going to think I'm talking to somebody else. I'm not crazy about that green dot. I'm starting to hate it. It's tiny. It's the smaller than the head of a pen. It's tiny. So, finally, I climbed up that shelf. I grabbed them. It was like a torso mannequin. I snatched that bitch down and I stripped its shirt off. <laughs> I stuck it back up there naked. <laughs> this is the mannequin's t-shirt or tank top. Thank God it had a price tag on it because I wouldn't have known how much it was. But it was so cute, I had to have it. So, do I have do I have a past? Do I have luggage? Baby, I got more luggage in the airport. I got lots of luggage. I got lots of issues and neurotic behaviors and twitches and shit. I mean, that's just the way I am. Um, but no, my husbands did not leave me. Trust me, the first two were leeches. You have to cut a leech off. A leech is never going to drop off of its host. As long as it's getting something from you, they're going to hang on to you. And uh, no, I cut the leeches off. They got cut off and flushed away. Like, get the hell away from me, you leech. You parasite. No. The leeches are gone. Glenda the Good Witch was never a leech. Glenda, nah, he's not like that. He is so different from them. He is nothing like them. It was refreshing. And fortunately, I was at a point in my life where I felt like I deserved that. I deserved to be with a good man who will not treat me like shit every day. I deserve that. Everybody deserves to be treated with respect. And you also need to treat that person with respect. It needs to be a mutual thing. You cannot expect people to treat you with respect if you treat them like shit. See what I mean? It's not fair. It's got to be both ways. I felt that I always treated my husbands with respect until I finally realized what was going on. And then I just had to cut the leeches off. And that's what I did. It's like, you got a cancer, you cut that bitch out. You don't try to talk to it. You don't, you don't pussyfoot around the issue. You cut it out and you get rid of it. That's what you do for the cancer. Cut it out. So, but yeah, he's different. And I'm really glad, I'm really glad that he's in my life. I really am. I think he's awesome. I wish we had more time to get together, but with my schedule and his schedule, it's hard. It's just hard. I don't know. And he's got some other stuff, some health stuff going on, and it's it's affecting him. And he actually had to go for an MRI yesterday. I don't know. It might have been Friday. I don't know. But yeah, he's got some stuff going on. I, I hope they can find out what's wrong. 
Um, but I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the future holds. I have no idea, but no, I'm in no rush to get married. I didn't get married just to get divorced. I, you know, I didn't, but I didn't, I didn't realize what I was doing, but I feel like now I've got a little bit more sense. I've grown up a little bit. I've matured. I, I understand more why I feel the way I do and how growing up around a dysfunctional married couple screwed me up, you know, as an adult trying to find a spouse. And, you know, I, I, I see that now. I get it. And so no, I'm in no hurry to get married again. If I never get married again, that'll be fine. I'm fine with it. So, yeah, if anybody wants to sling mud about me, they're going to have to pick some other topic because I've always been very open about that. Yes, I have had three divorces. Yes, I have three ex-husbands. And... I, I, whatever. <laughs> I don't care. Everybody's got skeletons in their closet. I don't care who they are. Everybody has them. It's okay. It's okay. I think you can learn from, from your past. And what I try to do, I try not to repeat my mistakes. I like to make all new mistakes every time. Yeah. So I've learned that, as Stuart Smalley would say, I'm good enough. What did he say? I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. And darn it, people like me. You know, I'm, it's okay. It's okay. I'm worthy of being treated with respect and decency. And you are too. If you're, if you're in a relationship and you are not being treated with respect and decency, think about how your partner treats you. Would you ever treat anybody that way? If the answer is no, might be something to think about. I hope you have, I hope you have a good person. Or if you are single, I hope you are, I hope whether you're single or not, I hope you're happy and satisfied with, with the way things are in your life. And if not, that you can make changes and make it better. Because I mean, there's always more we can do. There's always something we can do to improve our lives. So, and I'm the same for me, you know. I'm always trying to learn new things and do new things and try new things and yeah, just new experiences because life is a lot of fun if you, if you let it be fun. It can, life can be a lot of fun. It can be really funny too. So yes, I have three divorces and no, they didn't leave me. Even if you were wondering, apparently a lot of people just assume they left me. Like, no. No, I would still have either of the first two leeches if I hadn't cut them off. I mean, they would still be clinging to me and I would not have the life I do now. They would have financially drained me to the point that I was a shell of a person. Like, I'd be working all the time trying to support their spending habits. No, thank you. They can support their own damn spending habits and get off their asses and work for the money they have instead of tapping into my bank account. So anyway, I got to get a shower. I got a video uploading right now. I finished the nostalgia candy box thingy. I ate a big hunk. <laughs> I ate a big hunk. I've never had it. It's like peanut taffy or something. It's kind of like those Mary Janes, but it's salty. It was okay, but I like Mary Janes better. It was, I ate the whole damn thing, so it couldn't have been too bad. It was like chewy nougat with peanut, roasted peanuts in it. It was okay. A little sticky, but not bad. And I ate, I ate all the Turkish taffy, too. It was really good. Ah, all right. I'm definitely going to brush my teeth very well before bed. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you have had a fantastic weekend. Tomorrow's Memorial Day. I have to work, though. So, But it's okay. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good day. And I'll see you again soon.